Good morning, this is Deb, and I'm going to go over an abbreviated modified version of the Chapter 10 um, PowerPoint that will help you work through human genetics, that, that worksheet. That's my goal here. But I want to cover some general information first. Gregor Mendel, he was a numbers guy. He saw things in numbers, and that is why he became the father of all of our genetic uh, research and, and the things that we see that are true today. Um, he was born um, to parents that were farmers, and as he became older, became an Austrian monk. But he always loved physics and science. So what, while he was a monk, he started working with pea plants, and he started crossing them and seeing what traits would come out. He was very interested in this. And since he loved numbers, if you know numbers people, they remember anything about you that has a number associated with it, but they not, might not remember your name. So these numbers... He, Number people are kind of wired that way, I think. And so he saw everything through those numbers. And we'll see coming backwards that it was pretty amazing that he did that. So he started working with pea plants in the garden of the monastery. Uh, why pea plants? They were really easy to get. They were easy to grow. He could get lots of generations in short order versus animals. I mean, that takes so long for them to go through gestation and be born and, and become an adult, and then they can have children, and so it becomes too timely, um, too, time co too costly in time. So he'd go pea plants, generation, fast, fast, fast. He could pollinate it by hand, so he knew exactly what he had. Lots of varieties. He chose 10 specific ones, and they were true breeding. What does that mean? The offspring were like the parent plants and like each other. You'll find out soon that that means they were homozygous, and if they're homozygous, homo means the same, then they produced that trait in their offspring. It passed down. We're going to talk about dominant. It's expressed by the capital R and recessive expressed by the little r in our in our uh, Punnett squares, for example. Um, so a true breeding would have a dominant allele from mom, a dominant allele from dad, and so ends up with capital RR. And then a recessive trait would be two recessive traits together. And so the kind of things he looked at were tall and short and plump and wrinkled and green and yellow and flower color and pod color. And these are the traits exactly that he looked at. And you'll see that this row across the top is dominant. This row across the bottom is recessive. So he kept records of those experiments and those numbers. And he saw it in numbers. And the whole business about being able to uh, pollinate by hand, here's how you do it. So let's look at the flower. So we have the stigma and the anther and the ovary, right? Um, pollen is produced in the anther, these little guys right here. And then it goes down through the stigma into the ovary and, um, oh, excuse me, pollen has sperm in it. And so it goes down in here and, the, and this is uh, fertilized eggs down here, all right? But we don't want that plant to do that and we want to control what does it. So we cut those away. And then we take the pollen from the um, anthers of another plant and brush them on the top and then cover it up with a paper bag so nothing else can get there. And then we know exactly what the, those traits were. All right. For example, tall and short. This is one of the first ones he did. F1 means first generation. So he crossed a tall plant with a short plant. Guess what? He got all tall. He was confused. Why were they all tall? Did the shortness just disappear? Then he took those offspring, the F1 generation, the, or the first generation of offspring, both tall, remember, and he crossed them, and this time he got a ratio of three tall to one short. This guy's about numbers, remember? So here's here are his real numbers. And um, for example, tall and short, he had 787 plants that were tall, 277 that were recessive. And if you look down this list, you'll see that that's generally a three to one ratio. He counted so many peas because more data is valid. That's extremely important in all of science to have um, enough data to support so some small anomaly can't change things for you. 
Okay, now let's talk about some terminology that will help you with your human genetics lab. Allele. That's just the alternate form of a gene. Um, all of us that are diploid, we have one, we have two genes for each trait. We have two alleles for each trait. Um, for example, let's look at this flower. Like this one came from the sperm from dad. This one came from the um, egg from mom. And they both have the allele for the color of the flower. And on mom, this uh, comes the white, and from dad comes purple. But those are the alleles for flower color gene. Okay, so the alleles are the different versions, alternate possibilities kind of a thing. Now let's talk about homozygous versus heterozygous. Homo means the same. So this means the two alleles are the same. Hetero means different. The two alleles are different. Let's look at examples here. All right, so let's say this came from mom, this came from dad. For this specific trait, got a capital P from mom, a capital P from dad. So they're homozygous, they're the same for the dominant. The capital one means that's the dominant allele, which we'll see in a minute. This trait from mom got the recessive, the lowercase a. From dad, the recessive as well. So this is also homozygous, two little a's for the recessive gene. And remember when we talked about true breeding, that's what we're talking about. These homozygous, either dominant or recessive, passed down perfectly. All right, then on this last one, this organism has got the dominant allele from mom and the recessive from dad. So their genotype for that trait is capital B, little b. Hetero, which means different, so it's heterozygous. So let's look at some of your things on your handout. Um, let's look at tongue rolling. And by the way, all of us have used this in, in to teach genetics forever because it's fun and easy. But as you do your research at the end of this, you'll find out there's some problems with it. It's really not a true uh, trait. It's definitely impacted by genetics, but you'll find out. All right, so homozygous, two alleles are the same. So tongue rolling, if you can roll your tongue, that's a dominant trait, so that's capital R. If you can't roll your tongue, that's recessive. You've got the recessive trait. That's a little r. So for homozygous, for that trait, you could either be two capital R's or two little r's. Freckles. Freckles are dominant, capital F. No freckles, little f. So homozygous for that trait could either be capital F, capital F, or little f, little f. Now, heterozygous means different, so for those both traits, you could only be big R, little r, or big F, little f, all right? That's just to learn that terminology. Now, let's talk a little bit more about dominance. So, if there's a dominant gene, it has the ability to mask the expression of the other allele. So, let's look at ability to roll your tongue, R, capital R. If, there, if you have the ability to roll your tongue, that means you have a dominant trait, a dominant gene from either your mom or dad. You don't have to have it from both, but you could. But if there's one there, you can roll your tongue out of the two. If there's one capital F out of your two alleles for the freckle gene, you got freckles because that's dominant. That will take over and make you have that phenotype or that physical trait. Recessive. That means this is a guy that can't. we can't see it. It, you won't express it in your phenotype unless there's two of them together. So if this R is with that R, you're going to be able to roll your tongue. But if you have two little R's together, got one from mom, one from dad, means neither one of them could roll their tongue, then you cannot roll your tongue. It has to be two recessives for that trait to show. Two recessive F's, no freckles. So let's look at the possibilities here. Rolling your tongue, two capital R's, you can roll your tongue. Big R, little r, hmm, let's think about that. Two little r's, you can't roll your tongue. Same thing happening for the F. So, if you have only one dominant gene in your genotype, you can you express that dominant trait. It only takes one because this one is masking that recessive right there. So, capital R, little r, you can roll your tongue. Capital F, little f, you have freckles. So let's look at a few more examples. So 
um, freckles, his dominant two no freckles, big F, little f. Um, the phenotype, remember, is what it looks like. So let's say you have freckles. So what could be your actual alleles for your genotype? Well, you know you're going to be two capital Fs, but you'll also be, could be a big F, little f. We don't know for sure because this guy will mask that little f. So anytime you have the dominant trait on your handout, your genotype possibilities must be the two options, homozygous dominant and heterozygous. So let's say you don't have freckles. That means you're the recessive trait. You only can be two little f's because if there was any big F in there with that, if it was heterozygous, it, you would have freckles. So the only way you can have a recessive trait is if you're double recessive there in your genotype. Dimples, let's do another one. Um, to have dimples is dominant, no dimples is recessive. So let's say you don't have dimples. What must be your genotype? No dimples, recessive? Yeah, it has to be two little d's. I don't have any dimples at all. Um, my dad and my sister have them like crazy, but I must be two little d's. Okay, let's look at your human genetics lab. If you scroll down, you'll see that the first thing you're going to do is a prediction. What three traits will be most common among your classmates? And you can include uh, this as well, the information we'll talk about here in a minute. So look at this list. Tongue rolling, earlobes, hairline, freckles. So do you think your classmates have three top ones will be, they have freckles, they have short eyelashes, and they have mid-digit hair. So you have to decide if the dominant recessive trait is going to be more common in those three traits you predict. So you do a prediction first. Print off the instructions that have the pictures and the descriptions. And if I were you, you'll see I made another column down the side here. You can just jot it on the side if you want, if a working one. Um, so you know what capital, the, what the dominant trait is and what the recessive one is and what letter we're using for it. So let's say I can roll my tongue. That's going to be my phenotype. I type that in there. Can roll my tongue. I, can, I do not put these letters over there. Those are genotypes. Phenotype, you put in words. Brown hair, blue eyes, whatever. Got it? Okay. And then my possible genotype, since I'm the dominant trait, I don't know if it's two capital R's, homozygous, or a big R and a little r, heterozygous. So I have two choices. And I put an X in the dominant category. There's only a couple of intermediates. Um, maybe only one or two, I'm not sure. So as you go through that, don't be alarmed that you don't have any intermediates. It's not common at all. All right, let's look at earlobes. Um, free hanging means the bottom part is not attached. It kind of hangs out a little bit. Then the recessive is that it's attached. Look at the pictures. There's a picture in your handout, and you'll see what that means. I have free hanging. So once again, I would write here, free hanging. <laughs> Sounds slightly odd to me. And then um, I can be either this or this. Don't know. Without looking at my background, looking at my kids, a whole bunch of stuff. And you could probably figure that out when we get into the Punnett squares. Hairline. Widow's Peak comes down to a point in the front. Well, really interesting a side note on that. That's because... Um, the, when women went into mourning a long time ago, they wore this headdress that came down to a point, sort of like a nun's, but not quite, came down to a point in the front. And um, then they decided if someone was born with a hairline like that, they would likely be a widow at a young age. So um, kind of interesting there. Well, uh, the good old um, point in the front helps create this heart-shaped face, um, but my hairline is straight. So I am now, oh, and that should have been the little W right there. That just reminds me that this stuff, if you're working in any kind of a um, word, process, word processing program, it'll automatically correct the first letter to a capital one, and it'll mess you up and you'll lose points. So double check that all the time. Straight hairline for me, and that means I have to be Two littles, and I bet you I'll show you how it works. Oh, it did do it today. Right. Yep, stay two littles. You want to do that. I do have freckles. 
So I have to be this, or, oops, I'll put this first, or this, all right? Oops, this was recessive, and this was dominant. All right, so go through this and fill it out for yourself. And then when you get to the end, you'll find that there's some questions you have to answer in another document. Download that, and that's the one that you paste into your, um, into your uh, text box. All right, now the other thing, and that's the, these are the questions down here. Um, another thing you're going to do is then you're going to interview 10 random people. Usually it's family members and friends, it doesn't matter, not people on our, in our class. And see, just put tally marks. Like, let's say I interviewed, looked at 10 of my friends and my family tonight, and six of them, <laughs> I could put tally marks in there, I could just put my six. And we're dominant, and four could not roll their tongue at all. Let's say that seven people I talked to, the same people, we're going to do all the traits for all ten people, um, seven of them had this earlobe that wasn't attached, but three of them had the earlobe attached at the bottom to their to the side of their head. All right? Um, let's say that I had two that had the um, widow's peak. Eight of them had a straight hairline. Um, let's say Seven more had freckles and three did not. When we're talking freckles, we're talking any part of your body. So shoulders, arms, all that kind of stuff, not just your face. All right, so you see how that goes. You're going to fill that out, and then you're going to answer these questions. These will be the questions that you copy and paste with your answers into the text box when you attach your final document, uh, your finished human genetics worksheet. You've already done the first one with your predictions and you're going to have done that table. Now look at this prediction up here and see if you were right and then do a bit of research on that tongue rolling. So this is what I'd like to see posted to the web to your uh, discussion board. Good luck. I hope you enjoy it. This is really usually one of the favorites. Everybody starts looking at their family uh, which is kind of interesting. All right. Thank you.